on this episode confidence this is it babies this is it lack of confidence what am i even what is my life even and also pride oh. Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LaserDevs Academy, the advanced shmup tutorial, and we are creating a schedule editor. Uh, not what you, like the, the name is weird, right? If you hear about like what is schedule in a shmup, well that is the schedule that the enemies are spawning in, and we are in the middle of it. You, you've probably seen this. We have, we have a level that we can scroll through, that's really cool. And now I want to add interactivity. I want to be able to actually edit the, the schedule. I, we cannot do that right now. So yeah, let's get started right away. First of all, I want to create a whole new UI mode for the map view because right now we're kind of like drawing the map behind the table that we have here. And I don't know that the, we, we don't want to show the table of the schedules. We just want to show the enemies on the on the map, we don't want to show this and actually see the schedule here. So let me introduce a new UI mode for that. Right, so we're gonna create a function called, um, let's call it draw map. This, it's gonna be the map mode. I, I think it's gonna be the only mode in, in this game. We're gonna, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. Uh, and then this whole code here is something that we're gonna just grab out and put in here, right? Right? Yes. Um, not sure if we're gonna do a CLS. I'm gonna do a CLS for now. Oh, do not cut, just copy. Uh, right, so now this, this mode is, is boring again. Um, then I want to have an update function. Uh, update, uh, um, map. Mao. Sherman Mao. Um, right, and then we're gonna add, for now we're gonna add this. And we're gonna do like a refresh, not refresh table, but a refresh map. That's gonna be the map UI that we're gonna put put up here. And we're gonna get that refresh. Where's the refresh? Refresh. Armagur. There we go. There we go. There is refresh table. We're gonna get that. We're gonna edit this out. We're gonna create a new tab called UI. Uh, there we're going to put the refresh table function that we just copied out or cut out and we're going to create a second function called uh, refresh map. All stuff we just did already previous episodes of writing our editors, we're just doing it now for this schedule editor, our magnum opus editor, shall I say. In this refresh map I'm going to um, just empty the menu for now. Uh, let's run this. Nothing happens because obviously uh, we are not setting these things as the default update and draw function when we launch the editor. So we're gonna sell this to draw map and draw. Um, DRW we're gonna set to draw map and UPD we're gonna set to update map. Save run. Yes. This is it babies. This is it. This is this is the editor now. Um, we are seeing everything, uh, you know, we're seeing everything without the additional UI, that's good. So now I want to add more elements to it. First of all, one of the basic interactions with the editor with, you know, the, because I want to just click somewhere and create like an enemy, right? So I want to create, I want to see a mouse cursor. Right, so let us let us find out how that works. Um, we do have MM scroll, right? So we should also add, um, mm, um, yeah, the, we can use a stat function. There is a stat function to um, poll whether um, uh, where the X and Y position of the mouse are and which buttons have been pressed. And in fact, here, here we are in our pico8wiki.com and our advertisement free wiki. And if you scroll through this kind of stuff, uh, you will find as well mouse and keyboard. Um, and here's a bunch of stuff. So stat 32, I'm gonna write this down for me. 32 is mouse, 33 is mouse Y, so mark X and Y position of the mouse. And then there is 34, that is a bit field for the left, right, and middle mouse button. All right, back in Skedit. So something I maybe I want to do here is we have a do keys function that kind of takes care of the uh, keyboard presses. I want to maybe create a do mouse function. 
Um, and that way I maybe later on, you know, I can drop this in a different editor that we're going to have, if we're going to have a different editor. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to just doing all the mouse handling for us. So do mouse. Mm, let me create a function called mouse, uh, uh, a variable called mouse x. And, and let's set it to um, stat 32. Mouse y equals stat 33. And let me just debug this <laughs> immediately. Uh, let's see if this works. Yep, uh, we have, we see the numbers associated with the mouse position. That's already pretty cool. Now uh, the actual mouse buttons are going to be a bit difficult. Um, something like um, C C L K click click L C L K R click L, click R, and I'm going to set this to false. We're going to set this to false by default, and then we're going to go if. Well, I don't even know. Uh, let's, let's let's debug this. So debug one equals uh, stat thirty four. This is the stat that's re um, responsible for the mouse clicks, but I'm not sure what values this assigns. So let, let's just see. Okay, zero, one for the left button, two for the right button, and then if you press both at the same time, it's going to be three. Is there a four? there's also a fourth button if you want, to, uh, like the third button? I mean, so there's a whole bunch of um, mouse buttons encoded into one number. But you know, we're not gonna care about all the combinations and stuff like that. We're just gonna care about one and two for left mouse button and right mouse button. Right, so we're gonna do something like um, CLK um, if stat 34 equals one, then CLKL equals uh, true, CLKR equals false. And um, actually, we don't need that, right? Uh, and then if this is true, then uh, this this other one is true. Mm. I mean, we could just do it like this, right? Isn't isn't that the way you can do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just do it like this. What am What am I even doing? What am I even? What is my life even? Okay, uh, <laughs> debug. One equals two string C L K L. Oh, nope. Okay, yeah, when I'm clicking, and uh, this false turns into true. All right, hmm. So, so the way I will probably want to use those clicks is I probably just want to know the moment where I clicked. Um, because right now, because of right now, there's like this difference, right, between BTNP and BTN. BTN is true all the time, every frame a button is pressed, and BTNP is true only on the first frame a button is pressed. Um, so we kind of, I, I kind of want to do the filtering already, so we only have um, BTNP big type of behavior for my, our mouse clicks. We just want to click, 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 click. Uh, there's probably not going to be any dragging or anything like this. And if there's going to be, we're going to cross that bridge. So how are we going to do this? <clears throat> it's going to be maybe good to have like a um, CLK weight. So we're going to go if CLK, if, okay, let, let's do it like this. Um, if stat, 34, if that's zero, that means no button is pressed. In this case, CL click weight equals false, right? Um, if stat 34, if that's, if that's one, then we could do an else if here. If that's one, then we have to kind of wait Oh no, let's, let's, let's do it like an else here. No, 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 no. And then I'm gonna go if CLK weight uh, equals fall, uh, if, let's go if not CLK weight 
then. Um, so if we are not waiting for um, the mouse button to get released, CLK wait is like a variable that indicates if you're waiting for the mouse button to get released. Uh, and if the mouse got buttons get released, then we're going to set it to false. But if it's true, then we're not going to respond to any um, button mouse presses. So if um, we're we're not pr not waiting for the mouse to get released, then um, CLKL equals true. Else if. like this. This is what I'm thinking. A bit more complicated than the two lines that we had previously. Um, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, we need to actually say KL and say KR, we need to set it to false always. Right. Let me let me let me look at this how this works. See now if I click for one frame um, the CLKL will get set to true, otherwise it's usually false. So now we're just like um, really waiting for that one frame, for that first frame where the mouse button is pressed. And then with a the CLK wait value, we wait for the mouse button to get released before we respond to mouse clicks again. <sighs> okay, okay. Now all this stuff has been done. Now I just want to see now something on the screen. So let us draw a mouse cursor. Now we're a bit of an awkward spot right now because uh, we cannot actually use any sprites. I would love to draw like a mouse cursor and everything, but we cannot do that because we're using the entire sprite sheet for our <laughs> data, <laughs> you know, for our um, for our actual map. So we cannot actually draw the map, uh, but we can draw a mouse cursor. So let's draw a mouse cursor. Um, let's first first let's go with P set mouse X mouse Y. Uh, let's make it white, whatever. And there we go. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, mouse Y. There we go. There's a little cursor. Ah! <laughs> and then we can see if we can click. Well, yeah, well, CLK uh, L and 8 or 7. So it's going to briefly turn um, red when I click. Okay, nice little cursor. Now this cursor is a bit a bit too small. <laughs> so let me let me draw uh, let me um, draw cur. I'm gonna take a little function that draws the cursor at the right position. Function. It's gonna be here in a draw um, draw tab. That's okay. Draw cur cur x. Cur well, because it's cur x, let's go cx, cy. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna accidentally get into conflicts with some global variables. We might have global variables that are called like this. Uh, right, I'm gonna use some lines. I'm gonna use a cross. I'm gonna draw a cross. There's gonna be four lines. So the first line is gonna be cx, um, cy, minus one, and then cx, cy, minus two. Let's, let's see how that works. Uh, and then it's going to be just a white cursor for now. And then we're going to do the same thing, but plus. And then uh, that's going to be the vertical lines in the clock in the cross. And then we're going to have horizontal lines in the cross. That's so going to be again minus one, minus two, and then plus one. Oh, 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 I made a mistake, Rooney, here. Uh, minus two and then plus two. Like this, I think. Let's see how that works. And you know what? It's it's kind of okay. It's kind of okay. The cursor looks good. I, I, I'm kind of amazed. <laughs> okay, let us now also um, uh, local call equals R and D, we're gonna do like a random uh, color value because it's, it's it's always white and it's kind of like, I, I want to maybe a little bit, so let's go like a, let's alternate between six, six and seven. This is my cell phone doing the, the, the sound effects, if you, if you wonder. 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We need to actually draw with that color. See, now we have a bit of a blinking cursor, so it's a bit more clearer that it is the cursor. It draws more attention. So we have a cursor now. Let us move on to the next step. Something I wanted to do is I wanted to make the cursor. I'm going to actually add X scroll. <laughs> we need to add X scroll. Uh, and so that's why I, back in the days, I copied X scroll out. Uh, I want to calculate it now. So we're going to have X scroll. Just want to make sure because there's also scroll X, right? We also have a scroll X value. Uh, yeah, scroll X, but it's not X scroll. So uh, yeah, we're calculating the X scroll, but we we want to calculate it based on, not on PX, but on mouse X. We want to scroll sideways based on the mouse position. Yep, that seems just, just the same code that we have in the in the couch map uh, cart. We have just copied out the, the code. This is literally the same code. Um, so now when we're drawing things, oh, by the way, just, I just want to make sure that we are initializing X scroll. Um, and then when I'm drawing things, I'm going to draw this X scroll, the map. I'm going to draw it. The X position of the map is going to be at X scroll. Uh, maybe that won't work. It uh, totally works. Oh my gosh. See, that's nice. That's nice. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you can see I, I've left these kind of markers here on the side of the map just for exactly this purpose. So I can see how far we're scrolling sideways. And there in the center, we, see, we don't see the, those markers at all. That is cool. That is very, very cool. So what else? What else do we even need at this point? Well, it's time to actually think about the UI stuff. And it's kind of like difficult, difficult to, oh, oh, ay, 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 ay. So how are we going to actually do things in this editor? I said, something I said is that, you know, I just want to click and create an enemy. You know, just want to, this would be nice if I can just be like, ah, oh, you know, I want to spawn an enemy here, right? That doesn't quite work, right? Because the enemies don't, are not spawning in the center of the screen. They are spawning off screen, right? So I cannot spawn an enemy here. I can spawn an enemy when this is on the screen, but then the enemy would be off screen up top. But of course we can say like always, oh man, always <laughs> the package is there. <laughs> Sorry, that was a package for the neighbors. So you see there's like an inherent, um, inherent contradiction to the way we're doing things because we are always spawning enemies off screen, but we want to see the enemies, right? Um, something we can easily do it, however, is we can actually draw the enemies, you know, we can assume the enemies are, are gonna stay where they have been spawned. And so we can scroll past all the, scr uh, all the spawning points, right? That would be at least a simple solution for that. I want to actually see, you know, this, the things that we scheduled. So let's do that. Um, hmm. How are we going to do this? Well, let us just draw them. So we're going to go for um, <laughs> in all sched. Do we're gonna just go through all of the schedules, and we're just gonna draw them, all of them. Just like not, don't care about the about the performance. I'm just we're just gonna just, just gonna draw them. Now we don't have um, we don't we are not actually importing the sprites and so forth. We're gonna talk about that later. For now, I'm just gonna draw I don't know like a little square or something. So we're gonna do uh, rect rect fill. Um, so the X position, well, the X position is going to be just shh, um, a number, entry zone. First one is the, um, the scroll value at which we're spawning. The second entry is the enemy type that we're spawning. The third entry is the X position. So it's going to be shh, th three. Now the Y position is more tricky. We're gonna put in four, but you're gonna see in a second that, it, that it is, this is actually wrong. Uh, and then on the, because it's a rectangle, uh, I'm gonna um, draw it, you know, 
it's going to be 16 times 16 rectangle. We're just going to add the same, put in the same values and add 16 to it. This is wrong, but we're going to see why it's, it's wrong. See, there's rectangle over there. They're there, but they're not scrolling. And that totally makes sense. They're not scrolling. They're not supposed to scroll, right? Because we're not actually, you know, incorporating the scroll value into the position of those things. So we have to actually add the scroll value in here or subtract the scroll value. I'm not exactly sure. So let us do minus scroll uh, on, the, on the y value and then minus scroll. This is the wrong direction. So let us do plus scroll. That seems okay. So now uh, I don't like the blinking. <laughs> let me let me make let me make the red, red rectangle. Okay. So here are the two enemies that that get spawned. Right. Now I want to I actually want to verify if, if if they're spawning at the right locations, but it's kind of difficult for, for me to do this. And also, X scroll is not really affecting them correctly right now. So let's make sure that this also happens. We can do here um, camera zero X. X scroll and I'm gonna reset the camera. Uh, nope, that's not the, <laughs> the right way of doing this. The camera should, should just go in the X direction. And again, that's the wrong direction, minus X scroll. We, we, we get there eventually, don't get me wrong. All right, so now the X scroll is working correctly. Now let me look up the values of those bad boys. Uh, I'm going to switch to table mode real quick. All right, so the values, just, I'm going to write this down. So it first spawns at 10, 64 minus 8. And the next one spawns at 20, 32 minus 32, right? All right, back to map mode. Let's get back to map mode. Let's get back to map mode. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first one spawns at 10 minus 8. Is that plausible? Is that a plausible thing? When we scroll once, we scroll by 8, right? It feels like it's a bit too far, too far down. The problem is we don't actually see the current scroll value. So maybe we, let's debug this. Debug. Uh, one equals scroll. All right. So this is zero. So when we scroll by eight, it feels like it's a little bit too too far down. It feels like it's too far down. We also we don't have such precise control, and that's also something that also bothers me a little bit. All right. So let us now make it so that we can control the scroll value precisely using the cursor keys, right? So um, mm, 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 mm. let's go here and update. Uh, by the way, that I wanted to show this in a draw function, not an update function. Like so. Right, let us now here, we're gonna do if btnp uh, down, then and Sorry, there's just cars in front of my window, <laughs> just driving back and forth up. Uh, so if we're going down, then we're going to do, go plus equals one uh, on the scroll value. And if we're going up, we're going to go minus equal one. Right. Ooh, that's the wrong direction. <laughs> Always get it wrong, right? Eventually, eventually we get there. We get there. Okay. Right. So when we're exactly at eight, That's where we see, it seems wrong. It seems like it's not, not quite there. It seems like, right, absolutely correct. So this is the wrong position for it. This is not exactly where the enemy, enemy is spawning because it doesn't take into account at which moment in time an enemy is spawning. These enemies are uh, offset against each other because they're spawning at different locations off screen. 
but um, you know we're not actually taking account into when they're spawning. And I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by by making a small modification here. Uh, let me go into table mode. Okay, so this this thing here, this 10 and 20, this is the thing I'm, I'm bothered by. Um, let me set both of them to minus 32, right? And the one is going to be spawn 10 at um, scroll value 10, and the one is, the other one is going to be spawning at scroll value 20. So they should spawn like they should be on the map on different locations, right? Um, but we're going to spawn them at the same height of of screen, uh, but just at different moments in time. Uh, then I'm going to export this. Then I'm going to switch it to map mode. And as you can see, those squares appear at the same um, spot. So currently, the, our visualization is not taking into account you know, the timing of, of, of the spawning. It just draws all of the spawns at the same moment, uh, the, regardless when they're supposed to spawn. Um, so let's fix that. Right, um, so this is, let's let's just do like a little calculation here. Let's do a local sh x uh, and local sh y, so we don't have to, so okay, sh x is gonna be this, sh y is gonna be this, um, sh y is gonna get this attached to it for sure. like this and then here we're going to replace those bad boys um so now we just have to calculate y right um so i think it's going to be plus or minus i'm not quite sure uh sh oh, one because that's the timing of the spawn right let's try that Wow, why are why are these so long boys? Why they have to turn into long boys? This makes no sense. All right, the plus scroll. We need to get rid of that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they're now at a different locations. So that's definitely good. They're now being affected. I think it's also correct in that. Yeah, let me let me um, change those values so we can see if this really works. Table. Okay, well, I mean, we should put like a, put them on a button or something. I'm gonna set them to zero. So they're spawning uh, at, the, at the top edge of the screen. And so what I want to see now is that one, the center square should spawn at exactly, should be, uh, should uh, touch the top of the screen exactly at a scroll value of 10. And the left square should touch the top of the screen exactly at value, scroll value 20. Oh. I'm going to export this, very important, uh, and then I'm going to go to map, map, yes, so now we see the, the center rectangle is touching the top edge of the screen and the scroll value is 10, that's exactly what we wanted. And now the, um, the left rectangle is touching the uh, top edge of the screen exactly at value 20. Exactly what we needed. Right. Oof, man. Okay. So if we figured this part out, and now let us move on to the part where we actually want to get in all the other information. We want to get the M sprites in here. We want to have the enemy information here as well. We have to have to condense all of the different systems that we already have from different regions and we want to put them in into this editor. But that's something that we're gonna leave for the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm. Yeah, the doggy zone, right. So the next, there's an obvious next step and you know, it's gonna be a bit of a long step. So that's why I decided to make a cut off here, even though this episode has been, hasn't been that long. But yeah, uh, we now see red rectangles. I don't wanna see the red rectangles. I wanna see the actual enemies our actual enemies that we are supposed to spawn here. I want to see the UFOs, the little UFOs in here. I want to see them instead of the red rectangles. And I want you to go through all the steps. I'm going to try. I want you to try to go through all the steps required for, for the actual enemies to show up here. That's going to be the goal for the doggy zone.
Yes, yes, yes. And this is now the moment where, as always, I will say a big thank you and huge shout out to all the people supporting this show on coffee.com who are making this show possible. The address is again coffee.com slash lazydevs. And I wanted to read out another comment from the Zetikai on episode 27. They wrote, with regards to the dangers of getting caught up in the making of a cool editor as opposed to making a cool game that the designer intended to make, Pico 8 itself started with Zap of Lex Lovel Games, um, was trying to make a game. Since then, he has made Pico 8 Voxatron and is currently working on Picotron, which are all fantastic editing suites for games. But Zap doesn't actually make a lot of finished games, which may be the best, at least in terms of the communities that he has created in the wake of his exploration. What we start out to do in life is not always what we end up doing despite our intentions. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> you know, I've, I mentioned this warning, I gave this warning as, as kind of like a cautionary tale, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a horrible thing if you create a beautiful editor for this. However, these tutorials that we're doing it right now, these are tutorials for making games, so if you want to make games this is a very easy way to, way to get derailed and also something that you never see are all those developers who got derailed in the same way but also the editor that they created was never something that took off or created any community so Zep is kind of like an exceptionary person an exceptionary creator of those editors and it's very possible that you may not end up as Zep if you get derailed that being said creating a beautiful editor especially for pq8 is not necessarily a bad thing yes 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 so we are creating our schedule editor it's all coming together but on the next episode we are gonna deal with you know the, the thing that I was talking about, how all these things, all those tools, all these systems that we, we're creating, how they're all like built on top of each other and highly intertwined. Something we're going to discuss on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.